Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Willard. I'm a herbalist, and this is my son, Yarrow. We want to talk about some awesome medicine today. Dandelion is probably one of the most famous herbs we know of. It grows everywhere. So if you don't know dandelion, you better get out into your yard and start hunting around in your grass, and you might find a bright yellow, sunny looking flower. That is most likely dandelion. So dandelion, can you believe, it wasn't even in North America when the Europeans first came over. It was one of their most important herbs, so they brought it over, and look what it's done now. It's a real hard worker and a real great adventure. It's taken over North America and South America in just a few hundred years. Some people call it white man's footprint. Mm. In fact, it has so much tenacity that the Chinese say it has strong chi. That strong vital energy and strong chi, they employ as an antibiotic. They take the seeds and put it in medicines, and it's a great antibiotic. It's got that much strength, that little beaming sunshine in the meadow. Hmm. There are so many ways you can use this plant. In fact, it's also been known as a people plant. Now, there's a few plants like this, and they're the plants that follow us wherever we go. These are the ones that we should be using as medicine. Yes, not the exotic, crazy, wild plants from far off parts of the world, but the ones that grow right here in our backyard. And that's what Dandelion's here to show us. Something that we can use for a whole wide spectrum of health benefits that's right here under our feet. Now, a lot of people worry about them being in their lawn. They should be in your lawn. They're good to be in your lawn. But if you look at the pattern of what they do, they're only in the heavy traffic areas and the areas that are being compacted. So if you want to get rid of dandelions in your yard, the easiest way is to aerate it. If you heavily aerate it, it won't be there. That's what it's doing in your livers and your kidneys. It's taking care of the congestion and the compaction there. At the same time, that's what it's doing in Earth. It's growing in its little wee roots. They die back and it aerates the plant. So it's a cleanser. It's a really, really hard worker. Despite how proliferant dandelion is, there are some fooler plants. There's the goat's beard, and there's some miner's lettuces, and different kind of wild lettuce that look sort of similar. So we just want to touch in and make sure that you got the right plant. The name dandelion comes from the French, meaning dent de lion, which actually is teeth of the lion, or tooth of the lion. And as you can see, it's got these jagged teeth. Dandelions also often have a little bit of a reddish hue to them. There are some other fooler plants that don't have this kind of red, so if you don't see that reddish hue, you might have the wrong plant. These shade-grown dandelions are nice and big and lush, but we also might find them quite short and stumpy if they're out in a dry field. They have less of those bitter compounds, and they actually are a lot easier and tastier to eat. Mmm. If you find that dandelion is too bitter for you, a little hot water bath will help pull out some of those bitter compounds, and you can steam it up just like a chard or a spinach or anything along those lines. Okay, I'm gonna use my Hori Hori, which is a herbalist special weapon for digging up roots. This helps me dig deep without pulling up all the rest of the soil around. Oh, just a little one. These shade-grown ones often have little roots, whereas in the garden, where you have a lot more nutrient-dense soil, you might get big, fat roots that come down up to eight inches long. As you can see, this beautiful taproot here is starting to milk out some latex. Now, this latex has been used as medicine. I like this latex because it's one of the best things I've ever found for a wart. And guess what? It's the spring, and I found a wart on my hand. Oh. So what we do is we just take the latex and we paint the wart with it. You do it several times a day. Usually I've been lucky with about three or four times a day. And um, you do that until it turns brown and black and falls off. That can be as short as three days, but sometimes it'll take almost a month or whatever. And you can also find the white latex even in the stems. You do that and you just put it on. The thing is to remember to do it at least three times a day. Now these flowers are very high in flavonoids and quite tasty, in fact. Just give them a little try. Mmm, that's probably my favorite part about them is that really rich, yummy, kind of buttery flavor that you get out of the flower. We want to make sure we cut off all of the green parts. We just use the florets. See, it's called denuding the dandelion because ah. the green part is bitter. So it's springtime, and we're usually going to want to harvest the leaves and the flowers at this time of the year. But I've also harvested a few of the roots. 
Now this time of year, the roots are a little smaller and kind of more bitter. They have higher amounts of those sesquiterpene bitter compounds, which are actually helpful for stimulating the liver and bile. In the winter, the roots kind of fill out and they got a lot more inulin in them, which helps stimulate the immune system and kind of build up our strength in that way. So depending on the time of year, the roots of this plant are gonna have different medicines that are more specific to that time of year. This is just such a useful plant and it's amazing how it's so abundant everywhere. It's what I call a one, two, three punch. Not only does it work on the liver, it also works on the blood and it also works on the kidneys and the immune system. So if we have congestion in our body or any kind of toxic imbalances, this will help move and filter through the blood and help filter some of that out of the blood, get the liver working, get the liver moving and filtering all those toxins and then shunt that over to the kidneys and push that right out of the body. So this is a slow, not a fast herb, but a slow moving tonic herb. Now it also has a lot of other herbal actions. It's a hepatic that works on aerating the liver. It's a diuretic that helps flush out the kidneys. It's an empyrean that helps you poop. It's a cologog that helps move cholesterol and stuff around the body. It's an immune functioning herb that builds up your immune system. It's a stomatic, which helps tone the digestive tract. And it works on the whole system of the body. Really what it does is it decongests the body, aerates the body, and brings you back into tone and balance. Just like it does with that really hard work that the dandelion does in the field. One of the things I think that's so interesting about this plant is that people try to get rid of it. They fight it. They're battling against dandelion all the time. And what's more interesting than that is that it's often those people who are fighting dandelion in their field who are trying to get rid of those weeds that need it the most. And that brings us around to its best essence, its flower essence. When I have a person that comes in that's uptight, work too hard, has too much muscular tension in their body, I give them flower essences because it's that fighting, it's that aggression it works on. This sunny little plant as a flower essence gives you an ease of vitality, loosens up your muscles, and makes you want to play. What child doesn't want to blow the dandelion blooms away when they see the seeds? It makes you playful. One thing that's important when we're working with herbs is to really get a feel for connecting with the plant spirit itself. So often how I like to do that is to really just spend some time with it, maybe sit with it, observe the way it grows, the different seasons that it comes in, but also then to just nibble on it. Taking small amounts of a plant into your body helps you connect with its spirit. In this case, this one has quite a little bitter and cooling energy. So I can see that it's gonna keep me kind of calm and cool, but it's also gonna sharpen me up and tone me up. So just another thing about herbal medicine is not even using the herbs, but actually just connecting with the way in which they show up in the world. Dandelion has so much to offer. Not only are its flowers edible and its leaves, its roots are edible. We can make them into coffee. We can make them into tea. We can use every part of this plant, the latex, the, the roots, the whole thing. So as my father would say, use the whole herb and nothing but the herb. So help your herbalist. So if there's any videos that you want us to make, Tell us below, tell the world, tell your friends, and subscribe to this channel. See you soon.